I am Noriko Porfo, and this is Uncut News. Today, in what was probably one of the quickest rulings I've ever heard, the CCJ ruled that the Court of Appeal did not have the power to interpret Article 177.2 of the Constitution, and that the use of the June 22nd ruling by Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield to come up with the elections report was illegal, and thus it should be discarded. First, we come to them with the math problem last year. Now this, you can see it in Justice Saunders' face. The court is sick of us by now. That huge rainstorm that probably woke you up this morning caused a countrywide blackout. According to GPL, high winds damaged power lines and transformers in several communities across the nation, while the rain caused flooding in others. As of news time, power has already been restored to most areas of the country. Another storm is expected to hit us in the next 24 hours, because apparently Mother Nature believes that my vegetable garden has not received enough abuse. Oh well, stay safe people. This morning, a building that was being demolished at the Banks DIH campus in Rumvelt collapsed, killing one and injuring four. Two of the men were rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital, where one died while the other man is in critical condition. While the details of the collapse are limited, police and firefighters have since opened an investigation into the incident. You there, lady! It's time to break up with your taxi driver and get your own car! BM Soat can help! If you have a steady source of income, visit their showroom at Lot 9 Crow Street, Georgetown. Tell them Norico sent you, or call them on telephone number 231-8451. BM Soat Auto Sales! It's your turn to drive! Quick thinking by three police officers saved the city magistrate's court from an arson attack early Wednesday morning. According to reports, a pile of paper on the magistrate's chair was doused with kerosene to ignite the blaze. Four empty plastic bottles with suspected kerosene residue and two chisels were found at the scene. An investigation is ongoing. People, I was joking last week about that whole slow fire more fire thing. Please stop this. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of 55-year-old Louis Armstrong, who reportedly died on June 6 during a mining pit accident at Blockwater Bakdam, Kayuni Mazaruni. Reports are that Armstrong, who resided at Meadowbank, Georgetown, was working as a pitman when a portion of the pit facing caved in on him, and investigation has been launched. A family beatdown in Linden has landed a 26-year-old constable in jail. He was sentenced to one month imprisonment after he was found guilty of assaulting his nephew. According to the court, the assault occurred on June 23, 2020, at Amelia's ward, Linden, and the constable has since pleaded guilty to the offense. Partner with Cellular Plus and become a digital top-up vendor. Earn some extra cash at your shop or off of your colleagues by sending them phone credit. Aha! No internet or smartphone required. Just show up with your mango pelter and activate it at Cellular Plus. Call or WhatsApp them on telephone number 685-3109 for more information. The woman who was arrested for allegedly abducting a baby girl has had her day in court. 50-year-old Patricia Gomes of Nerny Village, East Burby's Quarantine, appeared virtually at the Georgetown Magistrates Court Wednesday, where she was charged with the offense of child stealing. She was remanded to prison and is slated to reappear in court on July 24. Yesterday, 36-year-old security guard Andre Easton of Seafield Sophia was shot and killed as he was feeding his horse a short distance away from his home. According to eyewitnesses, the suspect, 32-year-old Kiran Mark Adams, also of Sophia, approached Easton and the two appeared to have an argument before Easton was shot three times. However, it seems that persons in the community were unhappy with Adams' act as persons allegedly burned down his home and tried to beat up his mother. As such, the police issued a wanted bulletin for him. Just hours later, he was apprehended by the cops. Triple B's is the place to get your GPS vehicle tracker. 
You slaved out to make those car payments. Don't lose your hard-earned property to these CG motorcycle riding thieves. Call Triple B's Enterprise on telephone number 682-8326. Don't hesitate. Call them now. Here is our weird news story of the day. A 14-year-old cut named Lolly is a local celebrity in one town in England. Apparently, Lolly is famous for the pranks he likes to play on the people of Banbury, UK. He apparently likes to jump into random people's cars, to ride around town, and also break into office buildings where he tries to blend in with the staff like he actually belongs there. But, like the rapper Tupac Shakur, this cat's most famous trick is faking his own death. Lawley likes to lie down motionless in the middle of the road with his eyes closed and tongue hanging out, tricking motorists into thinking he has died as the result of a tragic accident. This has actually happened enough times that the owner was forced to send letters to her neighbors, reassuring them that they have in fact not killed her cart. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we will pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. You give your responses in the comments and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Tuesday question was, do you think we are taking the virus seriously enough? What's all you doing to protect yourself from the disease? You all had a lot to say, but we're only going to go through just a few of them. Starting with Sharon Davis. She says, not at all. Our Guyanese people are not taking the virus serious at all. Guyanese like fair play, and until they see the bodies dropping like leaves, they will continue to walk around like nothing is really wrong. That's dark, Sharon, but I understand what you're saying. Tiffany Williams says, No, I don't think we as the people are taking the virus seriously. Reason being, I am a young adult, and the way in which the young people are behaving, it's like there's no tomorrow for them. I don't think they know the risk they are putting themselves and their family members. And as Guyanese people, for once we need to look out for one another, as brother and sister, if we want to get rid of this virus. So I think we should follow the guidelines given to us. Ah, yes, Tiffany, I see what you mean. And Ryan Garcia says, I know I am taking the virus seriously, and so are the rest of the members of my family. We certainly know it's here, and it's real. The problem is that many of the Guyanese are not taking it serious. I think some of them don't even know what the word social distance means. I agree with you right there, Ryan. A lot of people do not know what social distance means, and I'm telling you this, if you get to close to Noriko, he will smack you. And Eshwar Mahadio says, I don't think the citizens are taking this pandemic very seriously. Most persons believe that this is a political setup, but it's not because many nations around the world are suffering very badly because of this coronavirus. In order for us to survive this pandemic and stay safe and healthy, we must follow the COVID-19 safety procedures and guidelines that are set out for us. All right, good, good point, good point. And finally, KS, who says, If you're social distancing and doing the right things, it would be difficult to tell if everyone else is, quote, not taking it seriously. Good one, KS. All of those are great responses, folks. I can see this is another one that you all put some thought into. So finally, I leave you all with tonight's question. Seeing as the CCJ has struck down the appeals court decision, what do you think will happen next? Think about that question and let us know in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Thursday's episode. Well, that's all the time that we have for tonight. Come back again tomorrow for another episode. Until then, I am Noriko Bullford saying goodnight, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.